All right, my name is Judson, and I'm here this evening to do two things. Number one, I'm here to make you laugh, all right? Because you know anything about laughter? People like to laugh. Now, granted, different people have different types of laughs, but that's okay. That's part of what makes people unique and memorable. Some people have that high end hyena cackle, and they're always like, hee 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 so you'll have that big, hearty laugh. They go to take a breath, end up snorting instead, and it's like <laughs> some people get to laughing real hard and fast, and on a roll, sounds like a machine gun, and they're just like. <laughs> but everybody finishes their laugh exactly the same. How does every single person finish a nice, big, hearty laugh? What do they do? They just go. Oh, that feels good. What very few people know, at that exact moment in time, your brain is releasing a series of chemicals, endorphins, dopamine, serotonin, all these other ones that do multiple things to your brain. Number one, it actually helps rejuvenate your neurological pathways. Scientists have studied and found that 10 minutes of good belly laughter is equal to two hours of extra sleep. The average child lasts between 300 and 500 times a day. And if you have a son or daughter, niece or nephew, cousin, next door neighbor, you know what I'm talking about, brother, sister, because they laugh at everything. They walk by a table and they're like, look, ketchup. <laughs> and you're like, that's just ketchup. And they're like, I know. <laughs> the average adult lasts between seven and 14 times a day. Somewhere along the lines, as we start growing up, we stop laughing. And not only do we lose those physical benefits laughter has, but also all the other benefits, because laughter is one of the few things that we can do. It doesn't cost any money, doesn't require any props, but actually helps us physically and then helps us create bonds with the people around us. And not only that, when all that stuff's going on in your brain, it actually creates the ideal mindset for the retention of information. Because that's the second thing I'm here to do tonight as well. I'm here to make you think. I think we live in a world now where we get bombarded with so much information, and every single one of those pieces of information is trying to convince us to do something, buy something, be something, be something else, on and on and on. And I think sometimes it's difficult to sift through all those information and really see what's truly going on in the world. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll have some fun, we'll have some laughs, and hopefully by the time it's all said and done, you will have felt that it's worth your time. I have some friends that have, that have this new theory. They have a theory that honestly I think is the most brilliant theory that I've ever heard. And what my friends call this theory is they call it the struggle bus theory. Now what the struggle bus theory is is basically this. No matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter what you do, there are always going to be some days that you just can't get your brain functioning properly. Okay. When you wake up in the morning, there's like a fog over everything that you do. You go to open up a door, smack yourself in the forehead. You spend like 10 minutes looking for your keys, and then you realize that they're in your hand the entire time. Things like that. And they say those are the days that you are quote unquote riding the struggle bus. They said, however, the funny thing is, is the older you get, the more people you meet, you will soon start to learn that there are some people who have a permanent seat on the struggle bus. And I didn't think that was true until I met someone who definitely rides every day. I was eating at Subway. I did Subway a lot when I'm on the road because Jared and I were tight. And I don't know if you knew this, but apparently, apparently there's an overabundance of lettuce in the world. And Subway, as a company, has taken it upon themselves to rid us of this abundance of lettuce. Because if you ever go into a Subway and you ask for lettuce on your sub, they don't just sprinkle some lettuce, they get like a shovel and start piling mounds and mounds of lettuce. So I always ask for the same thing, I always ask for light lettuce. And so I go to the subway, and I go in, I'm talking to the sandwich artist across the counter, and I'm like, I would like light lettuce, please. And this girl looks at me, doesn't even blink her eyes, and just goes, oh, I'm sorry, sir, we only have regular lettuce here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How's that bus treating you, ma'am? <laughs> Are you driving the struggle bus today, perhaps? Mm -hmm. I was very fortunate. I got to go onto the Oprah Winfrey show, which was fantastic. And after they aired my episode, about six months later, they re-aired the episode during the off season. And one of my friends calls me on my phone and he goes, hey, did you know you're on the Oprah Winfrey show? And I was like, I was? He's like, yes, she interviewed you and everything. <laughs> I was like, you're an idiot. But I couldn't say anything because literally not too long right after that, I had my own struggle bus day. I was home for a few days. I live in Ohio. I live in Cleveland, Ohio. And I was home for a few days, and I had to go to the grocery store. Now, there are two types of people when it comes to shopping. 
They're your smart intelligence shoppers who make a list of the things they need, they go to the store, they buy those things, and then they go home. And then there are people like me who go with a mental list of the things that I need and come out like four hours and $15,000 worth of junk later. Uh, especially when you go to Walmart or Target because you're like, ooh, look, a Snuggie. <laughs> so I went to the grocery store, I got all my stuff, I got in my car, I drove to my house, got out of my car, I'm gonna walk inside. And as I'm walking into my house, I realize I forgot an item I needed to have that day. Not a big deal. So I hop back in my car, drive back to the store, get out of my car, I'm gonna walk inside. And as I'm walking inside, I get a call on my cell phone from one of my good friends that I hadn't talked to in a while, so I wanted to catch up with them. So I'm talking on the phone, I'm walking through the store, and as I'm walking and talking, I begin to see all these other items that I had forgotten as well. So I'm grabbing all these items, I'm talking on the phone, I check out, still talking, walk to my car, still talking, drive home, still talking, get to my house, still talking, go inside, still talking, finally hang up the phone, start to put everything away, and then I realize that I forgot to get the item that I actually went back to get originally. So now I'm like, ha ha, I'm an idiot, get back in my car, drive back to the store, run inside, grab that item, check out, and I start walking to my car. Now, as I'm walking to my car, I have my car keys in my hand. I have a lot of nervous energy from time to time. And if I have a set of keys in my hand, I cannot just walk and hold on to those keys. I have to play with them somehow. Whether it's just tossing them up in the air, some people whip them around like they're gunslingers. Some people carry them on shoestrings or lanyards so they can throw them at people and pull them back real fast. Watch them go, ha, 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 ha. And on this particular day, I was taking my keys, I was walking, tossing them behind my back and catching them all in one fluid motion. I don't know why, don't ask. And at one point, I throw the keys too far, and I have to lunge to catch my keys. And I literally catch my keys right here. Now, I have a giant key on my key ring that has all the buttons for the doors, and it hits just right that that key swings around in an arc and hits me in the eye. Now, it didn't really hurt. It just kind of startled me a little bit. So I just kind of go like this, and my contact pops out. Now, I am blind without my contacts, okay? And I do not feel like driving home with one eye. So I quickly assess the situation and figure out the best thing to do is to find my contact, throw it back in my eye, get in my car, get home to my house, and take care of my contact. Sounds like a plan. So I put the bag down, I get down on the ground, I start looking for my contact. Now mind you, people are walking in and out of the store, nobody stops to help. They all just walk by and think, <laughs> sucks to be you. So I finally find my contact, throw it back in my eye, hop in my car, race home to my house, run upstairs to my bathroom, start taking care of my contact. And as I'm taking care of my contact, it slowly starts to dawn on me that I left the bag with the item laying in the parking lot floor. So let's recap real quick. Four trips to the grocery store from one item. Folks, I wasn't riding the struggle bus that day. I was chasing it down the road to get on still. I'm like, wait for me. <laughs> oh, look, ketchup. <laughs> and you all think that ketchup thing is stupid? So did I. Five days max before you're going to freak somebody out because you're gonna leave the conference, you're gonna go home, you're gonna be with your friends, with your family members for dinner later on. Someone's gonna pull out some ketchup and you're just gonna go. <laughs> They're gonna be like, you're weird. <laughs> yeah, but it's ketchup. <laughs> now, everyone rides a struggle bus once in a while, but what's really sad, what's really hard for me to watch is how many people struggle with life every single day. With how many people struggle to continue to be happy because of their inability to accept some of the simple truths about the world that we live in. Life does not have to be as hard as people make it out to be. But what you do have to do is be able to see what really is truly going on in the world. And the one thing that I think people struggle with the most, one of the things that I think causes people the most dissatisfaction, the most unhappiness, is the inability to accept, deal with, and handle change. Because no matter how much you try, no matter how much you wish for, no matter how much you desire, life is change. 